now we have uh, Zoltan Paal, along with his colleagues, one Chinese and one German. Composition of the actual surface of platinum black, photoelectron spectroscopic and catalytic studies. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we all know that the identification of active centers in catalysis has been a major challenge since the active center concept has been performed. Photoelectron uh, spectroscopy gives a powerful tool to do this. However, the operating conditions of photoelectron spectroscopy and actual catalysis are rather different. So we have to confine ourselves to second best solutions, and there are more than one second best solution. Uh, in the present study, we selected the way that we uh, selected a platinum black catalyst and tried to handle in the uh, photoelectron spectroscope in the preparation chamber exactly the same way we did before reactions and we carried out reactions separately as C2 uh, from the photoelectron spectroscopy. I wrote to you some, uh, some of the aims to find out if surface analysis gives an include to the catalytic properties. This was the main, main aim, and we are not quite sure that we have reached it, but we reached something. Well, the experiment, uh, experiment uh, contains nothing new or, uh, or, or very dramatic uh, as far as the electron spectroscopy is concerned. Uh, it's a normal light bulb uh, analyzer with uh, several things, uh, what the software permitted to do, uh, and spectra versus. One thing we have to uh, specify, and that is sample handling, because you know platinum black represents a loose powder and it is not always very simple to make a photoelectron spectroscopy under control condition with this loose powder. We place it into a cavity of a stainless steel sample holder, uh, press very, very gently into, into it to produce a, a roughly smooth surface. Uh, when, uh, and they uh, fixed the sample holder with screws to a manipulator rod, which was uh, uh, heated, and the separate experiment shows that the temperature difference between here and here was, well, 10, 15 Kelvin, so it is not an uh, order of magnitude. <coughs> and then, As the, as the sample reached the UHV chamber, it had to pass three stages of a vacuum sluice, and in the second stage, in a so-called preparation chamber, it was possible to uh, expose the sample to controlled atmospheres through oxygen and uh, after evacuation hydrogen which was an exact simulation of the regeneration process in the catalytic reactor, and we think we could measure the surface composition. Uh, we, well, uh, we claim exactly in the same state, but at least a uh, similar state uh, to those that the catalytic reactor need. Okay. As far as the results are concerned, the first part of the results uh, we have present to you some of the surface composition as measured by special lines of these, of, of these four lines. The upper, uh, upper line contains uh, data for a reference polycrystalline platinum foil, which was <coughs> pretreated uh, by some argon ion spattering, but uh, Essentially, the final pretreatments were the same hydrogen-oxygen treatment as we applied in the case of platinum black. 
And you see this treatment, the treatment uh, could not produce an absolutely clean platinum. Some carbon and oxygen impurity the drug present. The situation was not so good with the, uh, with the platinum black. HCHO means that it was reduced in aqueous medium with formaldehyde. And it contained in the aggressive uh, state uh, rather large amount of carbon, a surface carbon and some surface oxygen and some potassium, which is also not surprising because it was a potassium hydroxide solution present in, uh, together with the formaldehyde. And after, after the 60 Kelvin treatment, uh, the amount of platinum exposed increased enormously, but still we had a considerable amount of uh, oxygen and hydrogen treatment impurity. And what is interesting is <coughs> the summary is shown in the next few graphs. The main result is that platinum black cannot be purified beyond a certain extent uh, by this chemical treatment, neither can platinum foil. And we think the consequences for catalysis are rather interesting. But as far as oxygen cannot remove carbon and hydrogen cannot remove oxygen entirely in spite of generally accepted views. Because you know, you all know that it's, uh, it's uh, usually accepted view that if you treat it by oxygen, okay, the carbon is burned off, and then uh, treat it with hydrogen, okay, the oxygen is removed, so fine, we have a clean platinum. This is not true. <coughs> well, we detected some potassium, where well, the marked amount is uh, perhaps an exaggeration. And since potassium is regarded now the uh, general villain responsible for uh, several things in catalysis, we tried another sample which was potassium free and uh, we obtained it by reduction with hydrogen. And the same table contains the surface composition for this sample as well. And you see, uh, in the aggressive state, uh, there is no, not too much difference between the overall surface uh, composition. And then neither is, uh, in after reduction uh, with oxygen and hydrogen, regeneration, sorry. Uh, well, this catalyst contains less carbon on the surface because of course, no carbon containing compounds of acetic during reduction. We can go a step further, and in the second part, we can analyze the chemical state of the surface by uh, thoroughly investigating XPS light shapes and uh, attempting line decomposition in individual components and fitting them to the pattern. <coughs> Some of the fitting characteristics that have been shown here, and without going into details, I'm going to tell, uh, show you some of the spectrum. And the platinum 4F spectrum shows you a nice platinum doublet, and there is no trace of any oxidized platinum which should give a platinum two should give a doublet here, a platinum four should give a doublet here, and an oxidized platinum would uh, produce really a very, very difficult and complex spectrum. There is no sign of it. We could reach some states where there were some traces of the oxidized platinum, but I am not dealing with this state. The carbon spectrum belonging to this, to the, exactly to the same <coughs> sample, of course, after, after background subtraction, light, uh, smoothing, and then uh, followed by fitting, shows that it could really be decomposed into several components. I denoted the platinum carbide, which ought to be somewhere here. Obviously, it is, it is missing. And in some cases, we could find some platinum carbon, but 
in minor amount, so it was not a major component. The major components were a graphite carbon and something which we call a polymeric, a CXHY carbon, and some together with some oxidized carbon and perhaps some charged species, but, uh, well, we are not quite sure about this minor, minor peak. And the oxygen decomposition uh, shows a, a essentially similar characteristics. There is no platinum oxide here. There are cases where uh, platinum oxide is present, and in those cases, platinum oxide uh, can be seen in higher amounts than platinum carbide. I will not uh, go into details. Again, the major components are OH and H2O species. The oxidized carbon lines appear here too, and I think that the CO is if present, would be also here, and again some charged species appear here, and if we compare the amount, and these amounts with those amounts obtained with the carbon decomposition, they are, they are not far, uh, far uh, uh, from each other, so we are not in contradiction. Well, let us go into UPS information, which uh, you certainly all know. It is much more structure sen uh, surface sensitive technique. And there are there are some similarities which perhaps could be seen better if I show you a spectral spectrum. Both helium one and helium two spectra are shown. I am going to show you helium one spectrum first. And in the every seed state, we see this double bond here with some low Fermi edge. It means that even in this impure state, the platinum contains some metallic, uh, metallic fraction. And after oxygen and hydrogen purification, we see a rather, rather nice Fermi edge, which is comparable with the literature spectrum obtained with the platinum oil. And the same uh, conclusion can be drawn from the uh, helium-2 spectrum. After regeneration, we see a nice Fermi edge here, which is comparable with that of the platinum oil, and even with that obtained uh, from a platinum single crystal. And we can notice with red arrows the extra features which we cannot see in the literature spectrum and this, these are due to chemical impurities. And which are these chemical impurities? We did some different spectrum with that of the UPS spectrum of the reference oil. And you see now two helium-1 spectra for the uh, formaldehyde reduced and the hydrogen reduced spectrum. And you see the difference. The hydrogen reduced spectrum, which also contains some carbon and oxygen, contains them in a very broad band lacking any features, so it may be some some diffuse layer of uh, perhaps some carbonaceous deposit, but we think mainly of uh, H to uh, some sort of water, water over layer, whereas the potassium containing platinum, which was reduced by formaldehyde, uh, more market species are observed, and these are, well, these may be identified as some mixed OH and H2O species, and I denoted the blue a species which was reported by Bonser and the Cobra Hairs demanding being a feature of the potassium copper platinum silver crystals here, and this may represent So you see that UPS essentially gives uh, uh, at least semi-quantitatively the same information as XPS because the, um, uh, the surface uh, impurities are identified as OH and H2O species. 
to sum up the surface, uh, the surface uh, analysis section, we could, can put forward a model for the catalyst surface. In the other field, stay the carbon surface uh, impurities are predominant, and this double, broad double bump is very similar to the SPS spectrum, which was reported for the literature of the so-called ACH, the amorphous, amorphous hydrogenated carbon, or if you like, it, it's the, um, the diamond-like upper layer. And this can uh, uh, correspond to the CXHY species present in the XPS line of position. After regeneration, the catalyst, and the large fraction of the catalyst is in a clean metal state as indicated by the uh, very marked Fermi edge intensity. And these clean metal uh, surfaces contain some OH and H2O species, which are likely attached to this surface fraction. And at the same time, there must be some three dimensional deposits uh, on the surface. Well, just, just to avoid the remark, okay, you treated the catalyst at high temperature, cooled down, and, uh, I have, uh, and you froze all the species on the surface. <coughs> to avoid this remark, I remind you that we recorded spectra at 600 Kelvin, even, even at 700 and 800 Kelvin, and the spectra feature were essentially the same with some minor differences, so these these surface species uh, survive in high temperature. Now, you have another four minutes. Enough. Thank you. Just uh, a short comment on the catalytic, uh, catalytic consequences. It has been uh, frequently reported in the literature that the oxygen containing oxygen pre-treated surfaces has higher hydrogen only selectivity. Uh, for example, uh, Gao and Schmidt reported this recently for ethane hydrogen only in general catalysis. And we did some experiments separate to, the, uh, to this uh, surface investigation where we were giving, introducing pulses into an oxygen treated catalyst into hydrogen uh, carrier gas and indeed a high hydrogen oligic selectivity was found in the first pulses and in the, in the uh, later pulses the non-degradative product appeared in a uh, rather mild selectivity. As far as the potassium content uh, is concerned, we deliberately added the potassium hydroxide to this potassium free catalyst and measure the catalytic activity here. And you see there is no essential difference between the two. So perhaps potassium does a lot in catalysis, but uh, is not very effective in hydrocarbon conversion because the React, the conversions were very similar in the, in the uh, initial stage. The potassium containing catalyst was a little bit active, more active, and the later stages the order was reversed. So potassium is not responsible for these changes of, of catalytic activity, and this is shown here that we think that the likely reasons of the activity differences between the two samples may lie in the different chemical state and different morphology of surface carbon and perhaps potassium catalyzing is also a well-known catalysis phenomena and potassium catalyzes the oxidation of carbon during regeneration and this may give some extra features to the rest of the Thank you very much. Thank you. Can we have a light, please? And then I can see who wishes to contribute. Thank you. Jack Lanser. I'm interested in the differences between 
Now, I think we'd better stop there. Thank you very much. Uh, well,